Hello out there, comic book lovers. It is Friday. So you know what that means. I'm doing my Friday night reviews. I am going to take three com three comics from the previous Wednesday. So the three, what I thought were the best, and do a review of them. And then I'm going to take the one that I liked the least. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but it's the one that I liked the least. And uh, check it out. Happy Friday, people. I'm going to do something a little different this week. Just because. Last week was a really good week. Hard time deciding which ones I put on the good list. Conversely, this week, I have a hard time deciding which one I want to put on the bad list. Because a lot of the stuff I read this week wasn't that good. So tonight, I have, have there were six comics that I picked up Wednesday. This is good to them all because there weren't that many good ones of the stuff that I read. All right. So start off. I'm going to go with Brooklyn Gladiator. Excuse me. This is by Heavy Metal Publishing. Uh, Oster is the artist, a writer. Uh, hell, sorry. Um, Bisley is the artist. Mo M O H I M A N Mo. Yeah, is the colorist and all that. I loved Heavy Metal the movie. Second one, not so much. Heavy Metal, you know, let me give this a shot. I didn't even think it was it was kind of a cyber dystopian future type of thing that that uh, Excuse me, I haven't been sleeping well lately. It was just like, ugh. Usually I'm kind of into that type of stuff, but this was... I wasn't digging it. And I made it about three or two and practically fell asleep. The only reason I didn't is because I didn't have... If I had, I would have been out. It was not good. Uh... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to give it a one out of five. Just because the art wasn't story bored the hell out of me. And it just. It's like, yeah, no, not, not going to. Sorry. Uh, I, I do not intend to pick up any more of these if there are the ones. Okay, next. Shazam number 15. This is the beginning of a new arc. And this is basically uh, him going after um, kind of a Japanese robot saving a woman who turns out to be a substitute teacher who shows up at his class. Yeah. He saves a woman as Shazam, and the woman comes up to stop at Billy Batson's class. Now this, I really should have put that in the pile. This one was actually kind of... Because you're looking at it from the two different sides of Billy Batson's personality. You have Shazam, and you have Billy Batson. Same person. But, you know, you're, 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 you're getting a little bit of a different perspective. And you show the, the, the teachers, you know. 
views here, and then she has to show in, in the in the classroom, and it was kind of a dark story, and I really kind of enjoyed this. Uh, this was Jeff Johns writing it, I think. No, Loveness. What is the name of the person doing this? Uh, Jeff Loveness. Spells it wrong. It spells it J-E-F-F. -F, but what's he gonna, what are you going to do? And he, the art is pretty good. So you have, you know, Shazam dealing with, and then you have Billy Bats and dealing with the teacher. As a kind of a character building issue, and it's a one off. This was really good. And I'm glad. I give it three out of five. I don't know why I didn't put this lower down on the list. The good stuff. Next, we have Superman Batman number 12. Infinite Brainiac Initiate Brainiac Protocols Designation Annihilate. Uh, yeah, so you have William, what is his name? Um, now, basically, this is a story of Batman sending a message over the JLA distress signal, and it is picked up by Batwoman and Steel because something went wrong sort of see this right here and he's kind of explaining what happened and this that and everything else and uh, you have some guy named chemo going after him and that woman and steel have to go and try and rescue them. This was one of the weaker stories that I've seen done in the Batman Superman series, just because it wasn't it wasn't good. The last couple of arcs in Batman Superman have been really good, uh, especially the Ra's al Ghul one, where he unleashes Candor. Uh, this one. Yeah, not so much. Um, if they keep up with the stories they've been doing before this, I'll probably keep it up. But if this is the norm now, no. I will not keep it up. I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5. Next, Justice League Dark, number 26. Really, you know... Hot and cold series here. This is the cardstock variant. You have a continuing story with uh, Wonder Woman and Zatanna trying to release Zatanna's father from the hell that he's in to beat Cersei and the Upside Down Man. You have Detective Chimp and Man, Ma Man Bat dealing with the new Dr. Fate. Trying to get everything set up to fight in the green with the swamp thing. Uh, it was okay. You know, I'm not quite sure what I think about the storyline. Uh... Parts of it are really good. Parts of it aren't. Uh, I'm leaning towards just dropping the series just because it's they're continuing with the same thing. You're going uh, trying to fix magic. It's been two years. Uh, they're still working on it, and it's just it's like okay, 
This could affect the Bitigo. It shouldn't take this long. This feels like an event comic that's going on way too long. And it's just a regular series. So that means it's even going on even longer. I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5. Okay, now, the last two. Black Magic, number 14. Greg Rucka and Nicola Scott. Now, I am not a super big fan of Greg Rucka, but I love Nicola Scott's art. But this is an interesting story. Okay, you have, this is Ascension 1, Part 3. You have Detective Rowan Black's uh, coven mistress, the head woman in charge of the coven of witches, dealing with some people who are trying to kill her. I mean, I mean come on, look at, look at this art right here. Nicola Scott is awesome. The art on uh, Just how detailed this stuff is. And the story is kind of interesting. Uh, you have a ghost creature coming after Rowan. Right there. That, that's the creature coming after Rowan and the cat is Rowan's familiar. Uh... And she's being, dis you know, Rowan's distracted by her new girlfriend and the relationship, you know, relationship she's dealing with her. So she's not seeing what's going on. So the mystery of everything that's going on is really good. The art is just the main thing that's drawing me in. And I have normally not like this. I like the story more than I like the art usually. But in this one, it's more art this story is secondary in this one but the story is pretty good i will probably continue going on with this just because it's they kind of even out you know the story art's a little bit better than the story but you know they even out so i'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of 5 just because you know it's pretty interesting. Now, last one for this week. And this is surprising to me, for the most part. The Marvel book, which I usually don't even have in the best of the week. Just because I haven't been too much with the Marvel books lately. But, this is the Immortal She-Hulk Number one, this is the Alex Ross cover, and it looks like it's a virgin cover. And this is by Al Ewing. And it is tying in with the whole, um, what am I looking at? With the whole uh, Immortal Hulk series, which is going to end on issue 50. Hold on a second. But, uh, so they're bringing Jennifer Walter, She-Hulk, into this. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This issue is really well done because they're combining the stories. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've been reading uh, Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk. The Hulk can't die. Well, he does die, but he doesn't stay dead. Every time he dies, he can come. he comes back. Just the, the next night. Which explains why he's always coming back. And there's... Yeah, it's got him dealing with all sorts of different things. And it's... it's people induced with gamma radiation have that issue. So it's him, Doc Sampson, Betsy Ross, uh, and now Jennifer Walters. In this issue right here, it goes over her three deaths. The initial death that are, uh, caused her to become uh, uh, Incredible She-Hulk. One where she gets shot in the back and 
banner. It was right there, and he gives her the blood transfusion. Turns out she died then. Uh, came back, boom. Uh, years later, there's something else that caused her to die. I forget exactly which one it was. And then she just died weeks ago in the Empire story. And it was brought back. And uh, she goes to this special hell, which is also where the leader and uh, Samson and the Hulk go. And so this one has the leader in it. And so there's something going on between the leader in the Incredible, the Immortal Hulk series and the leader in this one. He's got a plan, but we just don't know what's going on. So connect the stories, which intrigued me. And I love what Al Ewing is doing with the Immortal Hulk series. So I was doing this. I had to pick it up. And the story he did in this one, connecting it, made it just like, wow. Uh, I will definitely be picking up number two. Because they're, they're, they're connected somehow and they're really good. So I'm going to give this a 4.0 out of 5 which puts this series up with the Immortal Hulk series. And if it continues as good as this one is, it's going to go for a while. I will pick it up every week. Now, that's it for this week. But the two things that I want to keep working on is... These two things that I just got in the mail, I've got this one Wednesday, and I'm most of the way through this. I've only got a little bit left. You can see how thick it is. I love the Grim Tales of Terror. I have two of the other books. I think it's three and four. I don't know why I didn't do f number one first, but it is a hardback. I want to finish reading this one. And I will try to work on it tonight and then take it into work tomorrow if I haven't finished it. Get that one done. And then something that I just got Thursday. Thursday night. Tales from the Crypt. It is hard as well. Not as thick. But uh, in the same vein. I love these stories. So I'm going to be spending time yeah. Thursday night, well, I spent a bunch of time Thursday night working on it, and then uh, see if I can get everything done, and I will do reviews of these when I get done, but I can tell you, they're going to be good reviews, they're awesome. Anyway, happy Friday, and... Uh, have you read any of the stuff that I've read? Let me know what you think of them and uh, enjoy your comments.